Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Today we will take a look at the netcode of Escape from Tarkov, which is currently in beta. Now, while I always do my best to keep my netcode analysis videos as simple as possible, you will still need to have some basic knowledge about computer networking, tick rates, update rates, network models, super bullets, lag compensation, packet loss, and a few other things, like how I do my network delay tests. So to keep the netcode analysis videos as short as possible, I've put all this information into a separate netcode 101 video, which you should have watched at least once before you continue with this video here. The card overlay in the top right corner, as well as the link in the description down below, will both take you directly to that video. So first of all, Escape from Tarkov uses dedicated game servers. And when you pre-order the game to get instant access to the beta, then you can choose between three different regions. CIS, that's Russia and post-Soviet states or former USSR states, a not very specific other region and Europe. Make sure that you select the correct region, because when you select CIS or other, then you are locked to that region and you cannot launch the game outside of the one you selected. However, the matchmaker does not choose the game server based on the region you selected, nor does the game client send a ping to the data centers or ping sites to find the best region for you. Instead, it takes your WAN IP address to determine your location and assigns you to a server region based on that information. In that process, it completely ignores that you might have a much better ping to servers in a different region. The reason why I know about this is that my internet service provider recently bought new IPv4 addresses that were previously used in Australia and other countries. They did update the location info for these IP addresses, but it takes those websites and services quite some time to refresh their databases. And so I was suddenly no longer located in Austria, but either Lithuania or Australia, depending on which service you asked. And don't worry, this is not my public WAN IP address anymore. So as a direct result of Escape from Tarkov using that information instead of sending a ping to the data centers, I got placed on servers in Asia or Australia, to which I had a ping of more than 300 milliseconds, as you can see here in the top right corner. Luckily, my internet service provider could change my WAN IP address very quickly, and so I could get on with the netcode tests on servers hosted in Germany. So what ping did I have during my tests? When you use the console command draw fps1, then this enables an overlay with lots of info. The first one is the fps cap which shows 120 and cannot be changed by the player. However, while a fps limit of 120 does negatively affect the player to player delay, it's not really an issue at the moment as the game is very poorly optimized, which leads to frame rates well below 120 even on higher end PCs. The next two elements then show the current frame rate and average frame rate. Then we have a few more values here where I'm honestly not sure about what they mean exactly or how these affect your online experience, but I will put a link in the description down below where you can find an explanation of some sort. The last few elements are very interesting as these show us the send rate of the client, the send rate of the server, as well as the round trip time or ping between the client and the server. However, the round trip time that you see here is most likely based on the game data that is sent and received by the game, as an ICMP ping to the game server shows lower and more stable results. When I then artificially increase the ping of my client, then this will not only increase the RTT value inside the overlay, it will also trigger the latency warning in the top right corner. And when the ping exceeds 120 milliseconds, then the text will turn red to warn the player that his ping is too high. Now, while I highly appreciate that the developers made this info available, there is sadly no packet loss indicator yet, nor is there any info about the server performance. Both would be very useful for the player. Besides the ping, the client's frame rate also has an impact on the network delay. As you can see here, the send rate of the client drops to 5 Hz when I reduce the frame rate to 30 FPS. Now, what are the average update rates of Escape from Tarkov? I used Wireshark to capture my network data of multiple matches on different days. And the results were actually quite good. As you can see here in this graph, the client sends an average of 68 updates per second to the server and receives 93 updates per second on average from the server. So these are very high update rates, which usually indicate very low network delays and more internet traffic. With an upload of 14.2 MB and a download of 61.31 MB after one hour, Escape from Tarkov needs more bandwidth than PUBG or Fortnite, but that should not be a problem for most players as the upload is still very low. 
Also to avoid any misunderstanding, please know that the results here are not meant as a rating nor a ranking. I just want to show you how much or little traffic these online multiplayer games generate. So as I said before, high update rates usually mean that a game has very low network delays. But when I did my tests, I was simply shocked by how bad the network delays are between two players, despite their ping of just 19 milliseconds to the game server and running the game at 120-ish frames per second, which is the frame rate limit of this game. Again, please make sure that you watched my Netcode 101 video to find out how I do these network delay tests, as that is required to understand what these results mean for your online experience. So I did these tests multiple times on different days and different servers, but the results were always very similar. For damage, I measured an average delay of nearly half a second, where the worst delay was close to 900 milliseconds and the lowest delay was more than 200 milliseconds. So these delays literally break the design of my network chart, as I did not anticipate that I would ever encounter a game with such long delays. The gunfire delay was better, but still way too long for a game with these update rates and at player pings of just 19 milliseconds. And the results for the player movement delays are just as shocking as the damage delays. I mean, you just have to look at this movement delay at player pings of 19 milliseconds. In the three years that I have now been testing multiplayer games, I have never seen such terrible network delays. I mean, I do understand that this game is still in beta, but not even PUBG had such horrible network delays during its closed beta. I don't know if this is down to the Unity engine that Escape from Tarkov is running on, but that network delay isn't just one of those optimization problems that you must expect from a beta. There is something very wrong here that must be fixed as soon as possible. With these delays at a ping of just 19 milliseconds and 120 FPS, it's no surprise that you die behind cover or die before you even see the enemy player. I have also encountered an issue where I opened the door and it took 5 seconds until it also opened from the perspective of my other test player. So there is not much more that I can say about the current state of this game besides that I'm shocked. So that's how I originally intended to end the video. But while Premiere was busy with the export of the video, I was contacted by one of the Netcode developers who saw my tweets about my upcoming Netcode analysis. What I can tell you about our conversation is that they are currently preparing an update to the latest stable version of the Unity engine, which will get rolled out during the open beta. And once that is done, they will address those problems with the networking. To me this sounds like a good plan, as an engine update can be a very big deal and might even fix some of the issues already, so you really want to get that done first. However, this doesn't change the current state of the game, so we must wait and see how fast they can not only improve the networking, but also the overall performance of the game client. And when they do, I will release an update video of the progress they made, so stay tuned for that. Now, if you enjoyed this netcode analysis of Escape from Tarkov, then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon, as YouTube's ad revenue is sadly not enough anymore to run a niche channel like mine. Without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, Battle Nonsense would not exist anymore. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you can also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.